So how much estrogen does a woman need to maintain or build bone? This is a pretty controversial question, actually. I recently did a video where I presented on a study looking at a 0.05 milligram per day estradiol patch. And one of the things I noted in that study is that it failed to protect nearly 40% of the women that were using it. Yet the claims made around the study is that this study shows that this is all you need. This is really frustrating for me because I find that this population mentality, meaning we can protect most of the people if we just use this thing, is so far removed from the individual care that I think everybody needs. And so for me, when I look at this study that I, I published on previously, my concern is that 40% of the women that are being told that they're being protected by this estradiol treatment is not actually protecting their bone. So there's another paper that came across my desk recently, and I just wanna read you this conclusion. What they say in this paper is, in older women, a dosage of 0.25 milligrams per day of 17 beta estradiol increased bone density of the hip, spine, and total body and reduced bone turnover with minimal adverse effects. Now, that sounds positive, especially because we're talking about HRT, we're talking about older women, like this is a population of interest, maybe this is a good study. But what I wanna talk about is why this is really confusing and I've seen this study misquoted. And I wanna talk about why even for providers, this can be a difficult study to read and understand. I also wanna talk about whether or not we should consider this idea of low dose or quote unquote microdosing estradiol for benefits of bone. And maybe there is a path forward to use a very low dose this paper gives us some insight into who that might be actually relevant for. All right, so first let's talk about this study. So this was a three-year study on 167 women over the age of 65. There were two groups, one group on HRT, one group on placebo. Again, the HRT protocol was 0.25 milligrams per day of estradiol and oral micronized progesterone at 100 milligrams daily, but only for two weeks every six months which is something I've never seen. They reported that there was a bone mineral density increase of 2.6% for the femoral neck, 3.6% for the total hip, 2.8% for the spine, and 1.2% for the total body. Bone turnover markers were reduced. There was no increased risk of side effects, and there were no breast cancer cases in either group. Okay, so slam dunk, is this a winner? We should be doing this for everybody? Well. It might sound like it works well, but just like all studies, you have to dig into the data. You have to break this down. And this is where reading headlines, again, can be very confusing. So first and foremost, what I wanna point out is that this 0.25 milligram looks a whole lot like a 0.025 milligram or 25 microgram per day patch but it's not. They actually don't say that this is an oral estradiol, but I would assume that this is a 0.25 milligram oral estradiol. We don't recommend oral estradiol because it gets highly processed by the liver. There is some concern, although it's debatable whether or not it increases the risk of blood clot. But from my perspective, I don't want to give you something that's going to go through the liver and get broken down into all these metabolites without first doing the thing that I wanted to do. So I prefer topical to get away from the potential concern around increased risk of blood clot, but ultimately not to give your body something that it doesn't need. Let's just actually give it the estradiol and let your body use the estradiol and then break it down. So out of the gate, the study doesn't actually change what I would do because I'm not gonna switch to using oral estradiol, but I'm still interested in what it shows because that is a low dose of oral estradiol and they actually measured estradiol levels too. So we can see kind of what it's doing from a serum perspective. So I'm interested in what that does. Like I said, this is a low dose or micro dose of oral estradiol. So let's look at what it can do, right? So they did report that there is a, you know, between two and 3% increase in bone mineral density, which is actually pretty amazing. But you have to remember that this is as measured from the impact of placebo, and this is a long study. So I'm often more interested in what happens from baseline. And sometimes this benefit goes away completely, but not always. So the good news is that they actually report both from baseline and from placebo. So we actually can look at the difference in the gap here. From baseline, they reported the femoral neck, the, the hip, went up 2.2%. Great. They reported 2.6% uh, from baseline. So that means in the placebo group, it went down a little bit. The spine was up 5.6% from baseline, which is a lot. They only reported 2.8% from placebo. Why is that? Well, we'll get there. 
Now, they also reported serum levels, like I said. So if you look at, at estradiol levels in blood, there is some thought around what this threshold needs to be. The more studies I look at, the more I see that the absolute number is not as relevant as the other numbers. In this study, they showed estradiol levels of 23 to 29 picogram per ml, which is pretty low, but actually similar to the study I reported on previously looking at the 0.05 milligram per day patch. It's still below that threshold that a lot of people are saying is the needed estradiol level of 60 to 80 picogram per ml. But again, I'm calling that into question whether or not everybody needs to be there. And this study it continues to support the idea that not everybody needs to be at that threshold. But here's an interesting point, and they didn't bring this up actually in their discussion. Their placebo group in the spine went up by almost 3%, 2.87%. Now, that's always a little bit concerning. Now, if they look on average, the bone mineral density went up in the total hip, the spine, and the total body. Why? They did give everybody calcium and vitamin D. So is that enough to increase your spine by 3%? No. Studies clearly show that that's not the case. So then another th odd thing that pops up is that the endometrial thickness, so the lining of the uterus was measured, probably because they were asking the question whether or not that's enough progesterone, but the lining of the uterus was measured and it increased in both groups. So again, that's odd. Why would that go up in a placebo group? Now, the dropout rates were also high, so nearly 30% for both groups. So it brings into question what was going on. Why did the control group go up? Why did their endometrial thickness get bigger as if they were on estrogen and to the same extent as those that were on HRT? So what was happening here? Was there something that wasn't being controlled for uh, in this study? And that is concerning for me. So it, it kind of draws into question all of the conclusions that they had. So then what can we draw out of this study? Well, we can say that oral estradiol increases bone mineral density even at low doses. Now, this was essentially an unopposed protocol, so I never recommend unopposed estradiol. I do think we need to have adequate progesterone. It potentially can be cycled, but not once every six months. This needs to be cycled monthly in order to protect the uterus, and that literature is out there. It's pretty apparent. I think in general, the study was underpowered. It didn't have enough participants. They had a relatively high dropout rate and something isn't right with the way that it was controlled. So it's not going to change my recommendations. I'm not switching to oral estradiol. I'm not going to aim for low dose for everybody so that it can help most people. I think we just need to be more thorough in our investigation of whether or not the protocol is right for our patient. I say this all the time. Yes, I want to know estradiol, but I don't just treat based off of estradiol. I also want to know what's happening with your FSH. I want to know what's happening with your androgens. I want to know what's happening with your CTX, with your P1 and P, with your parathyroid, and all the other biomarkers we get because they all work together. So some women do not need high levels of estradiol. I see people with this level, women with these levels of estradiol, where their FSH drops, they feel great, they have no symptoms, and their bone imaging is getting better. But that's not all women. So I think we need to get rid of this dogmatic you know, all you need is a microdose or all you need is a 25 microgram patch or a 50 microgram patch. I think we need to individualize care so that we can provide women with the treatment that they need based off of biomarkers and other outcomes. All right, that's it. Short one on this paper. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.